Blackmagic Design recently released DaVinci Resolve 18, which is the latest iteration of their popular video editing software. So with these cool new features involving collaboration and AI, a lot of people are going to want to try out this software. But before you do, you are going to want to make sure that your computer is up to the task. Today, I am going to be breaking down three kinds of systems that would be ideal for different kinds of users of DaVinci Resolve. The one big thing to keep in mind is that there's actually two different versions of DaVinci Resolve. The free version, DaVinci Resolve, and the paid version, DaVinci Resolve Studio. At $295, it's not like super expensive, but it still is, you know, quite a bit of money to spend if you're just starting out or if you want to test out the software. There are, in my mind, two key differences between the free version and the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is that the free version can't really make use of the GPU. The other thing is that you can only use one monitor in the free version, and this means that your playback and your editing all happens on one screen. Both of these differences really affect both your workflow and also the kind of hardware that you're gonna be looking for in order to run your computer for that workflow. So really, there's three kinds of users that I would identify for DaVinci Resolve. The first would be an entry-level video editor, someone who doesn't have a huge budget for a fancy computer, but also is going to be using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. You're not gonna be able to make use of much GPU power. Yes, this is a little bit inconvenient because it means that if you do have a powerful graphics card, it's kind of gonna be wasted in DaVinci Resolve, at least in the free version. But it does mean that if you're starting out and you're getting a new computer, you can allocate more of your budget towards a powerful CPU. For all three of these machines, I would recommend something from Intel's latest generation of core CPUs, that would be 12th gen. So if you're going for a pretty affordable system, I would recommend like i5-12400 or the i7-12700. These are non-K CPUs, so they aren't meant to be overclocked, but what's nice is that there are currently motherboards available that allow you to overclock in some way. With the kind of tweaking and hardware optimization that this allows, it's possible to get some really incredible performance from these CPUs. With the 12400, the i5, we were actually getting comparable performance to the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. So at this point, the other thing apart from the CPU that you're going to want to focus on is RAM. RAM will make a difference for the resolution and the size of the projects that you are working on. 32 gigs is good for 1080p and also for 4K up to a certain point. At higher resolutions, you are gonna to wanna to look at more RAM, but at the same time, you would probably then want to also go for the paid version because playback of higher resolution video is going to become an issue. Since you're also not gonna be able to use a dual monitor setup, I would recommend going for a single good monitor that's like a nice size and a good resolution. This way, it doesn't matter that, you know, when you're color grading, you're just gonna have like the small window in the corner for your playback with the rest of your screen being taken up with various tools for color grading. So beyond that, the next kind of user that I would identify would be someone with a little bit more experience, but who's still using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. At this point, a better option for a CPU would be one of Intel's K CPUs from their 12th generation. So either the i5 12600K, i7 12700K, and i9 12900K. If we look at this graph right here, we can see the difference in performance that you can expect between the i5 and i7 non-K and the i5, i7, and i9K CPUs from 12th generation. It's a pretty significant difference, and keep in mind, this doesn't actually factor in the performance gain that you would have from overclocking the K CPUs. Those are fully unlocked, and so you have much more control over the overclock. It boosts both single and multi-threaded performance. These K CPUs are the ones that, you know, Intel released with that whole new structure of having like some big performance cores and small efficiency cores. Greater single and multi-threaded CPU performance translates to better performance in most processes in DaVinci Resolve, especially in the free version. For these kinds of users, I would also recommend looking into a decent GPU because it is possible that not too long after going into this, you're going to want to, you know, upgrade to the paid version. GTX 1650 and 1660 aren't a bad place to start, but an RTX card such as the RTX 3050 would be fantastic. 
In terms of the monitor, I would recommend the same kind of thing that I mentioned for the more affordable system. But I mean, for this kind of user, it would probably be more feasible to be able to get a larger screen with a higher resolution. Finally, you've got high-end user who has the budget for like a really powerful system and also will be using the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. This kind of user can go all out, really powerful CPU and a really powerful GPU. You'll be able to use the GPU for both playback and exporting video. This can make such a huge difference for your workflow because even at higher resolutions, it's much, much faster to create and export your video. So yeah, the i9-12900K would be my recommendation for this kind of user. The AMD Threadripper line is a consideration, but I feel like you get much better value from the i9-12900K. It's compatible with DDR5 memory and it costs a lot less. A full system with an AMD Threadripper, it often costs about twice as much. Since you're gonna be using the full version of DaVinci Resolve, you are going to be able to use two monitors. Now, what'll be nice over here is if you have a nice high resolution monitor that's going to be in the same resolution as what you're editing for, and you can have like an ultra wide to hold your whole timeline. To me, the differences between the free and the paid version really just show some extreme versatility for DaVinci Resolve. It can be useful for beginners all the way through to experts and different users can get drastically different experiences from the software. So whether you are a beginner or a more experienced user, we would love to help you out if you're looking to get a nice new build for DaVinci Resolve. Even if you use any other kind of software for video editing, for architecture, for engineering, for any industry, we have a lot of experience with the most popular software used in these kinds of industries. And we know how to put together great systems for any kind of workflow and budget. So we're looking forward to hearing from you. You can send through a mail to sales at modernarcomputers.com. Let us know in the comments if there's anything else computer related you would like us to discuss.